I'm shocked. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at potting soil. So this video applies to both house, indoor plant stuff, and outdoor plant things. So we'll be looking at each soil separately. We have the premium pro mix variety here with the mycelium fungi, just top of the line. And we have the much, much cheaper Walmart brand of potting soil. So this is their house brand, it's called Expert Gardener. And we're gonna be comparing the two and the differences between the two. So depending on how drastically different they are, I may refer you to one for house plants versus for vegetables or which one will work better in a cloth container garden versus a ceramic or a plastic pot garden. It all kind of depends. So we'll see what happen, um, happens here. I've been using this Expert Gardener brand here for a little while. I was repotting and bumping up some plants here in the greenhouse. So I have dug into this a little bit. I've gotten to know it a little bit better. This one actually I've never opened and I've never bought this before because typically speaking, I kind of make my own potting soil from scratch. I don't really use these branded ones, mostly for price. It's not that they're bad quality. It's just they cost quite a bit more when you're buying everything um, together when you're doing so many pots and plants as I am, it makes more sense to buy the peat moss separate from the perlite, separate from the topsoil, separate from the compost or the manure that you, you decide to use. So that's what's happening here. So let's dig in and see what we can find. One thing I will say um, that I did notice with the garden experts is trays. <laughs> so if you watched my video on peat moss, how it's made, where it comes from, you'll know why a stick such as this, especially a heavily degraded stick such as this, will be located in a peat bog. It is from a forested area and this tree probably died many, many moons ago, fell into the swamp and because it's very anaerobic in that area, sticks like this tend to not decompose. So it's up to the supplier of the peat moss to actually remove these via mechanical filtration. Now, whether that be a sieve, which will take out you know, the bigger pieces or the smaller pieces, or if it's mechanical removal, I'm assuming they miss the large chunk removal and they kind of just stick to the, the smaller stuff. So that is one thing I did notice right off the bat. And there's, I mean, I only found that one pretty much this whole time and I used half a bag. So really that's not too, too horrible. I can imagine it would get worse uh, compared to other times. Like there's pieces like this that's not a big deal. Anything it'll add aeration once it does decompose. And then other than that is just your regular old peat moss based. Now this has very tiny pieces of perlite. If you watch my perlite video, you already know how much I don't like these smaller perlite pieces. Now you can add obviously larger ones in it, but base test, I would say not ideal for houseplants, especially if they are in a coated ceramic pot. If you had them in a terracotta pot, for example, either indoor or out, this would be a lot better, especially if your water utilization is really nice and high. You guys have seen the blog post with the potting soil mix video stuff on it. I'd probably treat this more in the realm of a compost or a manure, minus all the nutrients. So keep that in mind, you would want to add quite a bit of perlite pumice, something of that nature to this. Now in a cloth pot, like a container garden where you're using cloth, this is actually really ideal. So this is really ideal in a cloth pot scenario because we don't have those large chunks of perlite and pumice, we actually hold on to a lot more water, which is superior when it comes to cloth especially when we get into the later portion of summer, it's hot, we've got big giant plants in our containers, this potting tool actually would work very, very nicely. Now it does have compost and uh, manure, composted manure in it. So there is some nutrients in there. Now you may choose to add a granular fertilizer, whether that be on the organic or inorganic side, it really doesn't matter. 
Keep in mind, if you choose to use organic fertilizers in a container, you want to make sure you're really promoting healthy microbial activity and growth. You do not want to sterilize this at all. You want to put it in and then you may want to add in some amendments that will help increase the biological activity, feed those microbes, get them moving, because the only way for that organic fertilizer to be transferred into a usable form we need the intervention of microbes. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to the Promix, which I've never, quite honestly, never opened up. I wanna say my grandma uses this Promix Premium, but I'm shocked. Um, Okay, so top of the bag, not even dug in yet. And I was complaining about one piece of wood in this mix and I see three giant pieces of wood within the first millimeter of potting soil here that's upsetting. I've honestly never purchased a Pro Mix premium bag before. This is my first time. Is this normal? Okay, that's weird. That's actually really upsetting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quality control. Oh, and you know what upsets me about this? Is that these bags are packaged and sold by weight. So those twigs add weight to your bag so you're getting less soil more twig and they serve quite literally no purpose um if anything they actually sequester nitrogen if you ever watched the video on sequestered nitrogen it's exactly what that's doing okay this is interesting you guys this bag did not have okay so this this bag is better for getting more soil more peat moss soil is medium so this right here I'm gonna try to roll this back up again these guys use filler I tell you that right now so they use clay that's exactly what this is this is a piece of clay that's why it's making this nice little ball that's not falling apart that is a clay piece now the reason why they do that is they probably want to hold more moisture and they're probably also using it as kind of a battery for nutrients now there's no reason why you can't add clay into your potting soil mix the problem comes is when there's too much which causes a very heavy potting soil now if this was a true premium brand i just literally found another piece well uh a plane was going overhead but if this was a true premium brand and they were choosing to mix clay into their potting soil they can you need to add more perlite bigger chunks of perlite or you need to add more pumice to increase drainage and aeration clay notoriously holds on to water yes but it also can go anaerobic if we don't have enough pumice or perlite in this system and the reason for pumice and perlite in a potting soil is because in ground soil we have roots so i'm sitting on a grass bottom right here these roots from last year have died off they're going to decompose and they're going to leave little holes little tunnels earthworms ants are going to leave little holes little tunnels all adding to aeration that's why we don't need perlite in our ground soil we're not rototilling this or messing with this at all so the soil structure in and of itself allows for air it's also the reason why you may aerate your lawn over time maybe your soil became too compact you need to add that air in now this clay in a potting soil is not ideal for indoor plants in an outdoor scenario in a cloth container in a um, terracotta pot yes this will work especially if it's an active growing season but an indoor plant person i could see you killing your plants very easily using this because that's clay that's exactly what that is 100 percent clay Actually, I should make sure this isn't manure. No, that's clay. So yeah, that's 100% clay. I just did a ribbon test. That's clay. So 
Wonderful. Now what this is going to do, I found more clay. And this is the other problem. It's balled up. It's not dried out and made into a dust. And then that dust is added into the peat moss. They're clearly scraping this off of somewhere, plopping it in and doing some mixing, but they're all balled up and clay wouldn't find itself that easily just in a package sitting around. Um, so they don't even do a good job of integrating it, but they do a great job of integrating freaking sticks and more sticks and more sticks. Okay. Um, the perlite in this is again, very subpar. There's not a lot in here. You'd need to, if you're using this for a house pond, for sure, follow that potting soil recipe blog post that I have. It's going to help you out with this stuff. Probably wouldn't use this for house plants, honestly, unless you were, you were amending it. So again, the perlite inside of this, very small, borderline non-existent. And actually when you compare the two, when you compare the two, this is Garden Experts, this is Promix. The Garden Experts has more of that small perlite than the Promix mixture. Promix said, you know what? We're just gonna add some more twigs and that's what's gonna cover our assets here. I don't actually know what to tell you. So I guess the benefit of this one is that it has the mycorrhizal fungi in it. But if you watch the mycorrhizal fungi video where we talk about how strains are very specific to choosing their host root, this is using that same patented strain. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but it's the patented strain that Mike's uses and it's owned by this Promix company. So that strain is relatively universal. It works with a wide range of actual plants, but not all. So I do encourage you to do some research if you choose to go with this route as to whether or not you want to use that. But honestly, you could totally get away with this. Actually, you would get better bang for your buck here. You could add some more compost or manure. You could add some bigger pieces of perlite because you're going to have to add bigger pieces of perlite to both of these. And then you could add that mycorrhizal fungi into the mix as well. One thing with the mycorrhizal fungi, and again, I touched on this in the mycorrhizal fungi video, but with potting soil in a container, if it's in a plastic or a ceramic pot that isn't breathing, there are some issues there. The mycorrhizal fungi doesn't like to heat up a bunch. But when it is heated, which would be happening in a potted scenario, it the the colonies or the spores will not do as well. So mycorrhizal fungi in potting soil to begin with isn't the end all be all. The exception to that would be cloth pots, which allow for a little bit more heat or air exchange, meaning heat exchange, and yeah that would be kind of my biggest thing but yeah guys i can't say with any sort of confidence that this would be worth it if you're buying it just for the mycorrhizal fungi get that separately it's not the end all be all especially when it comes to container gardening but the end story to all this is that cane is like okay we're done now the end comments here are that you can choose whichever one you want this one's probably quite honestly the better bang for your buck that is the walmart brand and that may go for pretty much any no-name brand for that matter. I was expecting a lot more chunks of wood in this, not just that one chunk of wood. This had a lot of chunks of wood in it, which is really, really weird. And I didn't even dig that far down into the bag. Slightly concerning. Um, and then it had those clumps of clay, which is less than ideal. No idea what that was about. Unless if that's where they put their mycospores, I don't know. I do not know. Um, bizarre though. And anyways, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below if you've used either one of these brands and what you've noticed with them. One thing that should be said with any peat moss based potting soil is that it completely depends on what stage in the bog they're at when it comes to what you get, as well as the supplier, how the supplier chooses to deal with the sorting of the stuff inside, all that fun jazz. So I will talk to you guys next time. Kane is really 
enjoying his ear rubs right now and I will talk to you later. Bye. Do you like that? Do you like do you like to be a goofy pup? Do you think you're cute? Is that what you think you are? You think you're cute? Oh you think you're cute, okay.